unfortunately, uh, Sir Lego had droned on a bit this morning, and so we lost a big chunk of the first hour. We had to listen to him, of course, and important too that we listen to the man who's likely to be the future Prime Minister lay out his plans for one of the number one issues on the doorsteps of the country. But it did sort of eat into our time to hand the floor to you. So let's not waste that in this second hour. Do dial up and join the conversation. I don't bite. I do bark, though. 0344 499 1000, the number to call. Or you can text me 87 treble to remember to write the word talk before your message. Or you can tweet at talk. TV writer. With no further ado, let's go back to that top story today. And Sakia Starmer has announced that the Labour Party want to introduce counter terrorism laws to crack down on human trafficking. He says that this is going to enable them to go after the criminal gangs and help him stop the boats, although he has uh, avoided using that particular terminology. Let's go to Chris Phillips, who's former head of National Counter Terrorism Security Office, and see what he makes of these proposals. Hi, Chris. A fellow Philip. Good morning. Great sir. Uh, good morning, Alex. Uh, yeah, well, it's interesting that, you know, he has at least uh, suddenly popped up with a with a new policy. Well, well it's good to have a policy on something, isn't it? So, so uh, important to the British public. I think the diff difficulty we have here is, uh, we're, you know, we're working on an understanding that uh, France might be interested in, in stopping the boats because, you know, they are getting inundated. Their cities are full of uh, illegal immigrants. Uh, and uh, the thought that they are somehow going to want to prevent them coming to the UK is, is quite ridiculous. They're doing that at the moment because we're spending lots of money and they have to, to make a show of doing that. But, um, but of course, the European Union have got the same issues. And, um, you know, I think they're even considering bringing in a Rwanda plan. So I don't know how that fits with this. Now, it's interesting you say that. That's pretty much uh, the, the sort of fault line that I had spotted in Sir Keir Starmer's proposal, which is it's all very well saying in the UK we're going to use enhanced legislation uh, to allow police to go after criminal gangs, confiscating phones, raiding properties, detaining people for interview for longer periods of time, etc. But actually, by the time they've got here and the stuff we can do on our own shores, it's sort of missing the boat a little bit, mind the pun, because the problem's already happened over in the EU. You, where they've traipsed across multiple borders, potentially with some of the entities supposed to patrol those borders complicit in the movement of people. I think you're slightly alluding to that there. And that unless countries like France and the EU as a whole manage to sort this problem, then, well, the boats are still going to come, aren't they? Yeah, and we're getting the tail end of the issue, really. You know, if you go to Italy, they would say they've got a bigger problem than we have, and they, they probably have Germany the same Unfortunately, the EU is is not watertight at all, and people are walking across the borders. Sometimes, actually, aided by foreign national states. To be quite frank, you know, it's in Russia's interest to destabilise the West, and and flooding it with uh, refugees is a, is a good way of doing that. It always has been. You know, movement of people is always a, a means of destabilising countries, and that's what we we're seeing here. And um, you know, it's yeah. You know, I don't think anyone wants to spend all this money in Rwanda. But you have to have a deterrent, and and I don't see the the these ideas that that have come out today as being much of a deterrent. The fact that you're going to be shipped off to Africa may may be. Um, that, that will work. We don't know yet. Let's let's give it a go and see. I'm really glad you uh, raised the Russia point because it's something I've been saying for a long time now until I'm blue in the face. I think I'm the only person in media who's been pointing this out, that these aren't poor refugees coming across the channel. Of course, some may well be. But a lot of these are people who are being used in a geopolitical game of chess, an act of grey zone warfare. But people like Wagner mercenaries are actually in Africa right now, destabilising regimes, working with these states, working with criminal organisations, making them money. You know, they said the Wagner mercenaries are hardly some sort of, you know, purer than pure white peacekeeping force, are they? Uh, they're also making their own cut from enabling this gross exodus of people from the poorer parts of the world and deliberately flooding the West to destabilise them. I wish people made this point more often so the bleeding hearts would stop pointing at the boats coming across the channel going, oh, poor things, they're just coming from horrible countries where they're persecuted or impoverished. They're not. These people are paying a significant amount of money to ne'er-do-wells and hostile states who do not have ours or their best interests at heart. Yeah, and this is not a new problem either. I mean, if you look back, uh, we're talking about boats now. Do you remember we were talking about Calais and people jumping on 
uh, uh, you know, the, the truckers just couldn't get across the channel without people trying to jump onto their trucks. And and they've kind of stymied that a little bit, but, um, you know, they've moved on to these boats. And I think, you know, it's not in France's interest to stop people leaving their country, is it? Let's be quite honest. It's in their interest to stop people coming in. So mm. how much the effort they will go at the moment is being dictated by the amount of money that we're and the, and the kind of force that we're pushing on them to do something about it. But we have to have our own policy to prevent people coming into this country if we want to stop it. It's, it's just quite as simple as that. Now, as we know, this is sort of feeding into the ill will of hostile states, uh, criminal gangs, potentially terrorist organisations, cartels and a lot of it. And we don't really have any sense of who is crossing the channel and whether they also have ill intent towards us or not. Do you think it's about time that the West woke up to what is going on and frankly started to use more forceful techniques to stop boats or, or is that sort of a stretch too far no i think i think it's not just boats uh, alex it's it's people coming into europe you're quite right you know the the terrorism threat levels in in france are higher actually than the uk there's more concern in france about terrorism particularly on the run-up to the olympics and you know we think we've got a lot of people coming into the uk right across europe Pretty much every country is inundated with people and they often don't know who they are, Alex. And that's that's a real concern, particularly when they are coming from places that are that generally hate us, you know, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's Syria, Libya, wh wherever it is. These people, we don't know who they are and we've seen them throwing their passports into the into the uh, channel. We, we know that they don't want to be identified. And that's a massive concern for our security. And and to be quite honest, it's quite it's high time the the West woke up, and and started doing about it something strategically rather than country by country, which does mean us helping, of course. It, yes, it does. But um, but we have to look after our, ourselves uh, in the first instance as well. Yeah, I feel sorry for poor George Maloney, who was very much a hell bent on using the Italian Navy to physically stop those boats. Reaching Lampedusa was about to announce that policy, and none other than Ursula von der Leyen flew down to Lampedusa and probably said behind closed doors, Well, you know, all those structural funds you get Italy, or you know, all that debt you're having to pay back after the Eurozone crisis, we could make your life very difficult and crash your economy if you don't do as we say. And all of a sudden, Maloney had to drop her plan of actually using the Italian Navy to physically stop those boats. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. There you go, former head of National Counterterrorism Security Office. If anybody should be listened to, it's him saying, well, OK, maybe this legislation goes some way. It's not really going to have the full desired effect. And also, the West has got to wake up. These people aren't poor migrants coming over, escaping poverty, uh, escaping persecution. Indeed, some might be. But they are pawns in a far bigger game being used as an act of grey zone warfare, warfare by hostile states and the West at, uh, at large have to wake up and realise this and not have such porous borders because it actually presents a very real and significant threat to our security.